<laughs> so um, I'm just saying I have been edu- I worked in education for about 15 years before transitioning to UX and in education, the last six, seven years of that, I worked in uh, in my own classroom as an eighth grade English teacher, uh, specifically in um, historically underserved communities in South LA. So I was in Inglewood and in the Watts and the Compton area. Um, high percentage of students with learning disabilities, foster homeless youth. So, uh, you know, some might consider that like, you know, difficult, like learning like, experiences. Um, but I had the best time of my life. Every day was so much fun. I was, um, I was department lead. I was grade level lead. I was culture and equity committee co-lead. Um, I was a uh, teacher of the year. So I, I was good at my job. And if you knew me, you would have thought like you walked into my classroom, like, oh, she's going to, she's going to live and die in this classroom. Like, this is her tomb. She's never going to leave. Like, that was it. I had students coming back and um, visiting me over and over and over. But uh, what changed was 2020, the pandemic happened. And uh, I, my son was born on March 11th and shutdown was March 13th. So it, yeah, it was like back to back. And that was the year where everyone started teaching from home. All the students had like the distance learning and, you know, got to think on your feet, got to stay frosty. How do I pivot? How do I, you know, the goal is still students need to learn. They still need to hit these certain standards. We can't do it the same way we've done. Um, And I, you know, you roll with the punches, you roll and you iterate and you redesign and you backwards design everything that we do in UX. Um, If I could ask a question too. Oh, yeah, of course. Because motherhood is already tough. Just having to navigate that and remote work, how was that for you? Especially, was it your first baby? No, it was my second one. So Uh, I had, uh... yeah, I, I, so I have uh, a daughter, she's a little bit older, she's She's going to turn six. My son is going to turn three. So their their birthdays are only like two weeks apart from each other. So one birthday party. Hey, at least it's easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's uh, it wasn't it wasn't too bad because I was home and it was so much easier for me to be juggling motherhood and working from home because they were right there. And from, from as a teacher, as an educator, oftentimes we have to we're, we have to make that choice. Is it going to be your students or is it going to be your family? And that's never a choice anyone should ever have to make. But working in education, that often came up quite more more than I would have liked to have happened, especially with my daughter when she was my firstborn. Um, and so working from home made me realize that it's not the it's not the teaching aspect it's not the the students it's not the oh my god everyone's learning like the distance learning like that didn't uh, that didn't bother me what what bothered me was i get the opportunity to hey i got to go check on my kid real quick and i get to work i can't do that if i go back into the classroom and so that was the reason why i decided i needed to change um, I was, I, I said I was damn good at my job and, you know, it really did pain me that I needed to find something else that mm-hmm. I knew I needed to match the, the family dynamic now. Um, so how did you go about navigating that change through the current pandemic? And if possible, since you're already a teacher mm-hmm. and you're already well, along with like research and data points, how did you utilize that skill just to find out how to start in UX, you know? Yeah. Uh, first things first, I, I, it's so embarrassing. And I was like, I did a Google search. Like, what can I do from teaching? That's not teaching. Just straight ask that. And yep. I kept seeing things like, oh, you can be a tutor. I was like, great, more work, less pay. That's that's what I looked out for. Um, <laughs> uh, then then there were some of them were saying like, oh, you can be an administrative assistant or you can, uh, there were just, there was a lot of like other stuff, but nothing really sparked joy or played to my strengths. And then I kept seeing 
UX design, UX design, UX design. And at first I was like, what's an UX designer? I don't get it. <laughs> so as an old, as an English teacher, you could that was super embarrassing. And now it's captured on recording till the I end of the I can imagine it's like uh, it's okay. an aux cord. <laughs> yeah. What's it was, an aux designer? What's an aux, what's an aux designer? I don't understand. Yeah. So um, I looked into it and at first I was, I was terrified, you know, coming from an English teacher, I was that teacher that said, put down the Kindle, put down the tablet, pick up a book, smell the glue, don't get high kids, just feel, just feel the, the <laughs> literature in your hands. And the idea of going and working in tech, it did terrify me. I'm not going to lie. I was paranoid. I was like, I, I think I might've missed that, that boat. Um, and then I had to come to Jesus talk with myself where I said, you don't want to be like your mom who doesn't know how to handle the Apple remote functions. Like it's supposed to be really easy. So the sooner you can get into tech, the better. And, you know, I, I did have some pushback from even like my parents or even like from other coworkers who were like, so you're going to be like 35 and starting over again. And I'm like, I'm going to be 35 regardless. I might as well be 35 and doing what I'm do what I want to do and be happy and have like have that family balance and because either I way you're gonna be 35 in the years regardless you might as well take the time and take the chance to do something mm -hmm. that you'd really want to do yeah absolutely and I that's what I um that's what I ended up doing and so I was like all right let's dive into this let's do UX design and so you know back to that research part you don't, you, you, you need to kind of dive in and determine, all right, if you are going to be relearning something, you got to take a hard look at yourself as to what kind of student are you? So are you one who is okay with working asynchronously? Like I can do my work, just do it up there. And I 100% know I'm going to do it to fidelity. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to skip over the reading. Or are you going to be the type of person that says, put me in a classroom. I need to have the interaction. I need to see a teacher. Um, are you the type of person that needs to have multiple checkpoints along the way? There, you know, there's a lot of factors into like uh, learning design and you just have to, dis you have to really be honest with yourself as to what are you capable of and what are you, what can you push yourself a little bit more if you have to adapt to different learning programs? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and to, yeah. bounce off of that a little bit as you know speaking as a former fellow teacher here mm -hmm. um a lot of people misunderstand that concept of like okay how do you learn you know because what might work for you might not work for say chris or denicia it might not work for me mm -hmm. but it might work for michael over here you know so how do you how do you balance that all out throughout ux you know you just you got to do the test you got to do what you can do mm -hmm. yeah. and go from there i think yeah so and I definitely was the type of person I was like, I can do the work asynchronously. You give me like the reading or the videos, I will do it. But what I do need is a mentor. I need a, I do need someone coming in and checking the work for me to make sure that I'm not straying off the right path. Cause I'll, I'll make stuff up in my head and be like, Oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. I'm a chef's kiss. And then come to find out, oh, I broke all the usability rules, Oops. but it looks so pretty. No, no, no. I needed to have someone checking along with me. And so I came, I, I had narrowed it down to two different types of boot camps. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to do a boot camp because I just didn't have the time or resources or money to go back to like full blown, like, um, like, a like school, school. I was like, I, I, I can't do that. So some people can, which is great. If you have the time and resources, like for sure, do what you need to. Um, I had, I did have like some money set aside. So I did kind of budget out with like boot camps, And so I had split it between the two. And the one I chose was Career Foundry. Um, I'm in no way affiliated with Career Foundry in any way, shape, form. I just graduated from there. So this is not I like, a plug. Sure to say it. <laughs> I was like, it's not just a plug. So um, but I had a great time with my boot camp. Um, it was asynchronous. I was able to do it part time because I signed up in October, which is still the middle of the school year. So I was I would wake up in the morning. I would teach. Then I after teaching, then I would be with my kiddos, do the dinner, the bedtime, the bath time, you know, that whole war zone and then drop them into bed 
and then come back and do my online boot camp lessons until whenever I could. Um, and I just repeated that every night, every day, um, because the, and I'm not saying that that's for everyone and the, the self pace, it did allow you to be flex flexible. So when I was on Thanksgiving break and when I was on um, winter break, that was when I really cranked out lessons. And then I actually was able to get ahead. And then once but it also takes yeah. like a certain amount of dedication to be able to do that, like every single night and just keep mm -hmm. yourself on task. Yeah. So I definitely commend you for that. Yeah. Um, and it just, uh, there were certain times where it got, I got like really Zen. If any of you guys really are into UI design and that pixel perfection, hours would go by and I'd look up, I'm like, I should probably go to bed or drink some water. I have not come up for air in a very long time. Um, but that, and that's just like one of like the fun things about UI. Um, same thing with uh, with UX, like those those boxes and lines like speak to me on way. I feel like Dr. Doolittle sometimes when I look at those things. Um, and what, what do you yeah. need, little one? What are you missing? Huh? Do you, do you need another box? Do you need another auto layout? Oh, okay. Right? Okay. I got you. I got you here. <laughs> got you. Boop. Thanks, Figma. Yeah. Again, also not affiliated with Figma, but Figma's my jam. So, um, yeah. And it's, uh, you also have to remember it is temporary. The struggle is temporary. And yes, like same thing with embrace the suck. It sucks right now. There are so many things that I have to do. Maybe the dishes got to like, you know, not be dished in a little bit, but it just, it is all temporary. And mm -hmm. that really helped me put things in perspective. Like this is not going to last forever. I am working towards, I'm working towards freedom, which is what I wanted. I wanted to get in UX design and I knew it was going to happen. And mm -hmm. I had great mentors and I had like, I really had a great time with my experience. Um, but I also knew that, hey, just signing up for a boot camp, that's not going to be it. Like, you're going to have to do something afterwards. It's just Absolutely. like anyone coming out of like, you know, you know, high school with an or an AA or with a bachelor's. Like, it doesn't matter. So what? You've got a piece of paper that says you did the work. Now, what are you going to do to apply that? Like, what are you going to do to get that job? Um, I always tell people like nothing worth it is easy. Yeah. Like if you want to get where you want to be in life, especially like, for you, so if I can build off, it's going to suck now. Mm -hmm. It's really going to suck. It's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. It's going to be one of the hardest things you do because easily when we look at like the job aspect, it's like customer service, you know, just typical, you know, nine to five. Like that there's anything wrong to nine to five jobs. Of course, I've done nine to five, but when you're doing a specialty and you're keeping yourself really in check and you're taping yourself to tasks, you really learn what it takes to have just task management. Yeah. So I definitely, definitely agree. Mm -hmm. Even I've learned going through UX design, like, just like I think everybody else, just how much self-management it is. And you just really see what kind of person you are mm -hmm. just going through this kind of task. Mm -hmm. so I commend you for it. Oh yeah. And, um, that's that self-management if you can capture that and find a way like I used Notion I used Trello I use uh different colors like on my Google Calendar to keep track of different projects all of that stuff I've actually brought over into my current work and I even like took like screenshots like one day and I was just like hey no one's asked for this but I'm gonna post it on LinkedIn this is how I keep track of all my projects and, you know, showcasing that when we say like attention to detail and able to juggle multiple projects, here's actual proof of me doing that. I'm not just saying that on my resume to like get through like the ATS, I'm actually doing it. And here's a screenshot of how I accomplish that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's how it is for everyone, but this is how my, this is my mental model. This is how I work. This is how my habits are ingrained. Um, if I could ask a question too, when you were going through the boot camp, did you have a strong community as well too? Is that an um, important plot point that you also looked for when you were deciding just which boot camp was for you, just having community? Yeah, so my mentor Ricky, he grouped some of his like some of his mentees together, and then we had like our own Slack channel. Um, and then my bootcamp also had like 
there were multiple Slack channels that you could be a part of. Um, you also had to say, hey, I just need someone to review my work. And you would like, you would like barter as if like you were on the playground, like, hey, I'll check yours if you'll check mine. Like, oh, who's got like a usability test? Oh, I've got a card sort. And you just trade off with each other and you kind of like hold like hold each other to, hey, I'm calling in a favor. Remember that card sort I did for you? Can you check out my usability testing? Make sure I've got and that was pretty cool. Uh, another thing that I did to like help build community. Oh, nope, Siri, calm down. No one's talking to you. Um, another thing I did was the, like hackathons, designathons, because you get thrown into a group of strangers, and that's a great experience because just like working in an agency, you're working like on a, an in-house project or even freelancing, you might just get put into like a room full of people. Like I have no idea who you people are, but we got to get this thing done, and that's a great experience where. How how much can you get done and what's your level of communication? And there are going to be difficult people or not. E that's not even difficult people. It's just like just like different ways of design or different ways of approaching a problem. And how can you how can you juggle, you know, three or four strong personalities? Like, do you know when to ebb and flow? Do you know when to help pick up slack? Do you know when you're like, nope, that's my boundary. That's my line. That was supposed to be your responsibility. These are great areas of practicing that before you get a job because, and those are experiences you can talk about saying like, oh, did you ever have a time? Like, oh yeah, I was on this uh, hackathon. Um, we came in first place, we won, but one of my partners completely deleted my flow uh, the day before we had a presentation. So, oh yeah, that was, that was fun. Yeah, Fun is that that's exactly why I copy <laughs> my Figma files for myself. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and it's um, it's it uh, that was a wild experience, but it really, I was like, yo, we have we got presentation the next day, and I was in charge of our presentation, so it's like, well, what do I do? Do I go back and recreate my flow, or do I have my that my teammate? redesign it even though like that wasn't hers or do i do i just focus on the presentation and just be like all right sorry like suck, sucks to suck but i gotta move on um the answer to that was i let my project manager handle it <laughs> um I, yeah I'm like, all right no you always uh, always pushed it up the chain mm -hmm. we actually have a question here from uh miss jody she's she's asking where do you find these hackathons like how do you just randomly stumble upon them do you actually no, actively search I, for them i've actually accumulated a that list of where i find hackathons where i um let's see do 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 do, do. Is it this one tips and guides do 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 I just talked about being like so organized and now I'm just like, oh, there's so many tabs. So organized. So right many here. tabs. Yeah. Who created this? Yeah. No, but I have a over time, like I've like accumulated places. Like um, if you use Adobe XD, uh Adobe Creative Jams is a great one. Um, and they show up every once in a while. Um if you are on a if you have Slack, everyone has Slack. Everyone has Slack now. It's like the new Facebook. Oh, that was gross to say. Um, if you have Slack, there are a bunch of other like Slack communities that I've joined. And then even within those like Slack communities, they talk about, oh, upcoming events. And that's where I got it. Um, uh, let's see. UX booth has one. Eventbrite is always posting them. Um, so, yeah, I'm I am more than happy to share my list of where I find internships where i find volunteer programs where i find hackathons and it's not just like what's tried and true for me it's also tried and true for like some of my other friends uh who i've met through these programs and like then you know they're seniors in their field now and so all to, we just kind of like accumulate like hey like i know someone who found a like a job through this one oh hey i, I know someone who's like posting like internships um so definitely have that whole list i'm more than happy to share out with this group Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I did link in the chat, at least um, when I had found hackathons through DevPost. It's a dedicated website that does show current and upcoming. So besides for I have seen like a lot like you for like Slack because I communicate on Slack as well, too. 
mm-hmm. with upcoming hackathons. So it's very useful. But if you want like a dedicated page there, that's just one suggestion. Yeah. yeah. And there's also like, um, like if you're from LA, uh, there's one that's like hack for LA where it's not, it's not so much like a hackathon, but it's like a bunch of like volunteer and, um, like a bunch of volunteer programs or that specifically in the LA area. And you can also Google like for your area. I know there's one like, like hack Seattle, like hack San Francisco. There's a bunch of other places. So um, that's another resource, but yeah, like I said, I'll definitely drop for all of you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a group on um, LinkedIn and we also have a lot of events. So join as well and learn from others. It's always good. Yeah, we need to see you at one of these design chills, Miss Justine. <laughs> You're more than welcome to join in and, you know, just chill and hang out with our beautiful personas. It's of fine. Of course. I'd love to <laughs> chill and hang out. Yeah. I was just telling Tracy, I was like, this week has been an all my weeks. I'm on jury duty summons. And so everything mm-hmm. has just been like tentative, 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 tentative. I'm like, maybe I'll show up. Who knows? <laughs> I just, we'll see if I need to do like my civic duty or not. Hey, you know, a maybe is better than a no. Okay. Oh, yeah. let's, let's I, leave it at that. I'm always, I'm always down to like meet like des- designers from everywhere. Cause that's, that's honestly one of the best things that you can do is, is talk to other designers because I, I have found that like when you end up like working like in a company or like you're in like a team for so long, you end up, you end up having like kind of like blinders mm. and they're like, oh, well, this is just how it's been or this is just how we do it I'm like well just because you've always done it this way doesn't mean it it might have been great in that moment but does that does that mean that that moment that that method still works today like do you have new resources do you have new people like hey like even the tools are they're updating all the time like are your methodologies like keeping up with the technology that is available to us um so that that I one of the best things I always do is I I will go and join um like entry level uh like networking or um like workshops like oh hey learn from another senior designer cuz then for me I'm like cool 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 I want to see what this senior designer this other senior exactly. designer is talking about I want to see how they approach problems and it's a really great way to go in and kind of like pick up on like what else is happening in the industry if you if you if you if you feel like you're not getting enough exposure um and it's and it, I, if I was to build like, on that I think that's very important because that's one thing especially us as lab coat UX that we build off on just getting more input and just more collaboration from senior level UX designers because it's a chance of learning and they could do something that's innovative or new that you've never heard of. So mm-hmm. I'll yeah. take you back off of that. One time I joined this um, chat for senior UX researchers and they were talking about getting people more comfortable at research. And she suggested um, a couple where you're talking about their different ways of parenting their child using Venn diagrams, which I've never heard of or seen before. So it's like a compare contrast. This is what I do. This is what you do. This is what we do together. So Mm -hmm. there was like a lot of techniques I've personally learned and we've learned together as Lab Coat UX, having senior level designers like you just come on and also share your input because it's amazingly helpful. Mm-hmm. for us and also entry-level designers too yeah definitely it, and it really helps like it helps you like reflect also and be like oh dang I've heard from like four or five other designers that this is how they do it we don't do that maybe we need to update our practices um mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm like I'm not saying like that's like I'm like dogging like my own work right now like it's just it's just something that I've even done when I like back when I was teaching where like you go, you go to the conferences and you go to the workshops and the professional development and you hear from other like veterans of what have you done to be successful in the classroom and then you realize and you that you just also have to be very honest with yourself like i said like th- you're not going to get better if you believe you're already the best like oh, yeah i'm already doing what i need to do it's like no that that's not going to that's not going to happen and that that's one of the reasons why i left teaching was because in teaching teachers tend to get really, we put a lot of love and care into our curriculum, not, you know, understanding our curriculum to the best in order to be able to teach our students. So we get really, really, really upset when 
our curriculum or our, our learning patterns get shook because I'm like, oh, man, like we don't even have time to know what this new novel is or know what this new curriculum is. And you want us to teach it in the next two weeks? Like, OK, buckle up. Um, and I didn't I didn't know, want I also to have a question in chat for you just to go on earlier from the topic yeah. where we were talking about um, how you went through Slack channels and also for the hackathon where you did place first place. This is mm -hmm. from Jody. She asks, do you feel like through hackathons, it was a good place for networking and like community? Oh, yeah. Do you feel like oh, you yeah. Benefit from that and meet a some more. Absolutely. Sorry. Like my, my light just turned off because it's like, <laughs> hey, you're done with work. Go away from your computer, which is normally a nice cue, but I'm working right now. Um, no, yeah, I my hackathons were a really great resource and. I used my hackathon experience in my interview. So it, it your interviews will change depending on like which company or what agency um, you're going to. But my company, the way that I got my interviews, like we, we had what was like the gauntlet. That's what I, no one else at work calls it the gauntlet. I'm the only one that calls it that. Um, it's a eight hour interview process, essentially. So uh, the first hour is you presenting. So it's not a whiteboard challenge. I, I had to present one to two case studies. Um, and then later in the day is probably like 40, like 30 to 45 minutes, like smaller interviews with different, different heads of departments or different team members, other principal or other senior designers. Um, yeah. So yeah, eight hours. So have some water, drink a bit, uh, have a banana, do some stretches. Like it's, it's a long day. Um, and yeah, you do have breaks in between. Um, and I would, my second. If you don't mind me asking, what position was that for? Because eight hours? Do oh, everyone, get, like, everyone has to do it. Everyone has to do it. It's eight, from L1s to principals. Every every designer coming on the team has to go through it. Because our our company, we, um, so I work for Esri. Esri is a GIS, so Geographic Information Systems. We um, are a mapping company. So we have about a hundred and uh, probably about like a hundred, a little under 120 like software products, all about mappings, all about how we you can use mapping to find solutions for different industries. So we are in conservation, we are in uh, infrastructure, we are in emergency response, we are in pipeline, we are in forestry, we are like, we're, we're everywhere. Okay. Um, so a lot of industries use our softwares to help find solutions for their businesses. Um, uh, our department, Creative Lab, so anything you see on esri.com, um, that's, a, that's the Creative Lab. So we're on part of the marketing team. Anyone that comes to our team we not only want to ensure that they have the technical skills, but we also want to ensure that they have skills with certain verticals. So like, yeah, you're a UX designer. That's great. What's your skill for like Digcom? Or what's your skill for working on like brand level advertising? So then the, that's what those smaller interviews will be. But it's also a nice way of checking like culture fit because- It's a good way to see if you're scalable too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hello, I got one kid. Hello. Hello, little one. Hello. Okay. Because I make me bed. Okay. I need you to go. I'm still talking to my friends. Okay. 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 Love you. This is staying in the edit, by the way. A hundred percent. I mean, that's the reality of remote. You know. No. It's fire. Did you hear her voice, mommy? And I'm like, oh, she only does that when she knows, like. I'm in front of other people. So she's like, I'm going to be like really sweet and cute. So that mm -hmm. no, one under, no one knows what a troublemaker I really am. <laughs> That's oh, <laughs> it's like a husky. Really cute and fluffy on the outside. But the second you leave them alone, they just tear the whole place up. Right? Yeah, that's her. Honestly, she's got like the attitude of a cat, really. Just mm. fair enough. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. What was the question? Yeah, so the scalability there. when they're going through um, just the eight hour process of Esri. Mm -hmm. I can see the usefulness, but it's like a shift. That's wow. And that's for um, what what role is that for again? You said it is for anyone that's an L1 all the way to principal designers. So it does not matter where you are coming in because. 
we don't we don't even um even my team right now we don't even like use like pecking order like yeah we have principal designers we have senior designers we have l1s and l2s but we also recognize that hey someone's been at the company for like six years like you might be a new senior coming in but you don't have the enterprise knowledge that this person who's a six who's been here for six years like and it's a very humbling experience and that's why that's why we really want to make sure that if you're joining our team you are joining like a huge cohort like on our uxers there's like 13 of us there's like 13 ux designers um then we have the ui designers there's probably like another like dozen of them over there and we also have content writers we also have the authors we also have our fed team um not even thinking about some of like those who are like content strategists or our web experience strategists or our pms um there's a lot of people that you are going to interact with and we want to make sure that if you're joining our team one you do have the technical skills two you are going to be a cultural fit but three like are you are you open to learning are you open to knowing like i'm new here there's a lot of stuff that's being thrown at me um like just there's a lot there is a lot of learning in the first like six months like first month first three months six months one year um i've been there for a year couple months odd amount of hours and i every day i'm learning something new about our company um yeah i would say just like that hiring process definitely ties into our topic of finding your niche as a UX designer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because if you're going through this eight hour process and you're saying like, if I was related to myself and I did have a talk with this, at least briefly also with Jenny too, and also with Chris and Tracy, because I said, you know, I had this one project that I did and it was scalable. I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, that makes me a product designer. Mm -hmm. But wait, the majority of the stuff I do falls into UI UX. So can I really consider myself that? And I would just like to know just your input because just through your company and you're going through that recruitment process, it really humbles you to see, I may market myself as such, but do I really have the skills for that position? Yeah. Okay. So I know that the trend right now is for us designers to be product designers. That's the trend. However, being a product being what being actually classified and doing product design is different than being a UX UI designer, which is different than being a UX designer, which is different from being a UI designer. Okay? So they are not interchangeable. There are some elements that are within each, like you cannot be a UI designer without knowing proper UX principles. Okay, well, let me back up. You cannot be a good UI designer without knowing proper UX principles, okay? Same thing, you cannot be a good UX designer without knowing, hey, what are what's gonna be the UI later on down the road, all right? Um, product design typically means that you see a feature from end to end. And that means that you are working in sprints. That means you're usually working like with the dev team, like you are putting, you're working on tickets. There is a backlog. There is a very specific process to being a product designer. You can be a UX UI designer. Um, you maybe might be talking to devs at some point, but UX it doesn't really define you as a product designer. Exactly. Like you might be UX UI and then like you hand it off like to devs. Like when you say you're a product designer, you are consistently always talking to your dev teammates and you work within like the two week sprints. And that is a very specific, like I work on a singular feature. If you are a UX UI, you could be working on multiple features at once, but you're not really seeing it like from end to end. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, same thing with being a UX. I am classified as a UX designer. I do not do the UI. Do I know UI practices? Yes. Do I check in with my UI partner? Yes. Do I talk with the dev team? Well, it depends on the project. Automatically, I'm not a product designer. Like that's just not what it is. So 
when I do feel like just that talk we had earlier Mm -hmm. um, when you were mentioning you can't really put yourself as a product designer unless you've actually been there you're talking to the stakeholders you're Mm -hmm. actually going through tickets and I'm just like wait a minute Justine I need to change my portfolio right now and and you know what it especially if you're going to be a freelancer you might be like well crap what am I you might be all of it you might be on some projects I am a product designer here because this company or like this team does work like in that sprint system and then you might be like on another freelance project where you're like you know what for this one I really was just a UI or a UX UI designer and I think I know we want to just give ourselves like a title but the title comes with the type of job and the tasks that we're doing. Like, um, I love to give absolutely. myself like VP title. I really would. Am I doing VP work? Absolutely not. So you, you your title comes with the type of work that you do. So it, it, it is kind of funky when you try to put it like on LinkedIn or you try to put it on your resume or you try and you put it like on your, your portfolio. Um it, it really will change. But I think if you just like are honest and say like, Hey, like I have worked on some projects. I am product designer because I, you know, I do this or some projects. I am just a UX designer because they already had an allotted UI designer. That's why on your case studies, you need to be very explicit as to what your role was because different projects means, Hey, you might have a different role this time around. So that's, that's just what it is. And we also touched base with this as well too. Because we were talking about, just as we can talk a little bit about Esri, because when we had a chat earlier, you did mention, like, if the pro- if the job description says product design or mm-hmm. so, and then in your portfolio, you're just seeing more like UI, UX design, mm-hmm. that basically pushes you out of the market for the job, too, because you're marketing yourself as something that you're not. And you've mm-hmm. not necessarily had the workforce, you could also really decrease your chances, of course, for yeah. that kind of job. For I can't speak for other companies, but I know at least for ours, like we had like we had an L1 position open and I, I posted it up, but we had 397 applications. 397. That's what my manager told me. And my manager went through and looked at all of them. And at a certain point, we kind of have to like, we gotta like cut it out. We got to be, we got to go quick. Um, I can see like Jonathan's face. <laughs> you gotta automate that stuff. Like, <laughs> um, uh, I, our job position that we posted was specifically for a UX designer. We did see a lot of product designers come in. It gives us a little bit of a pause. I'm not saying no, but it does give me pause because if they had been doing all this product design work, to me, that makes that comes off as you that's the work you want. That's the work that you like. That's the work that you're really good at. I'm worried that if I bring you on for a UX design position, you're not going to be happy because you're not going to be doing product design work. So Absolutely. I I would suggest like if you see a uh, if I, if you see a job posting, look and see what is the role they're actually asking for. And if you see it's a product designer, then highlight your work as a product designer, if you have done that. Um, it, and that, that's just how it is for us, where I'm like, mm, I, I will still look at product design roles. I just want to make sure that you're going to be happy here. I want to I wanna make sure we're a good fit for you because at the, like at the end of the day, like what happens if they're unhappy, they're going to quit and they're going to go find something else. And then all that like work into training, it's out the window. So that them, I'm invested in finding the right person as well. Cause I want them to stay. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and cool. retention yeah. for stuff like that must be kind of ridiculous, especially with so many different avenues of approach that you know a ux designer or ui designer or product designer can even take like mm-hmm. i would imagine that retaining those kinds of people that kind of talent that you've cultivated over the course of three six months of you know mentorship and training i, I can see that being fairly difficult yeah so. 
Yeah, it is. And we, I, I'm also, I also do our, our internships. So when I look at our interns, I'm like, all right, are you like, you, you, you're just going to be doing straight UX work. Like some let's people, go, like, some lemonade. I know I'm just like, let's, let's, let's get real here. Do you really want to do an internship where you're just doing UX? Like you're not doing any UI, you're not doing any other, like you're not really going to be talking with devs. Um, is that, is that really what you want to do? Um, so I, and that's what, Some that's what it is. I just, I just have like very honest conversations with them. Um, but part of also finding like that job, not just like your title, it's also how are you branding yourself as a designer? Cause I came from, yo, I came from teaching. I came from teaching English and now I work for a mapping company for the longest time. I, for the longest time, I thought it was like, you know, UX designer and GIS, I was pronouncing it GIS. Okay. Like I was like, oh yeah, I work in GIS. Nah, girl, it's GIS. Like who are you, who are you talking? Very <laughs> embarrassing. Um, But the reason that I got my job was because the way I branded myself as a designer, that I, I found myself like in the type of industry I wanted. I thought for the longest time, I was like, okay, going from teaching the, into UX design, like the, the closest thing is ed tech, and I'm just going to make that jump, and it's going to be so seamless. And the, the more I, I, and then I realized, I was like, ooh, this is my chance where I can actually like work in other industries or other like areas that I, I never got a chance to do as, as a teacher. So that's, that's why if you go on my, on my portfolio, I, it says like UX for, for positive impacts. I don't care what industry it is. I need to, I devoted like half of my life to education, to, you know, historically underserved communities. I'm not doing this because I want a, you know, like a type of paycheck at the end. If the work I'm putting out means there's better, there's good in the world, I'm, I'm fine with that. And that's why I was like, I'm not interested in financial tech. I'm not interested in game tech. Those might be cool. Those might be up and coming, but that doesn't sit with me as a person, like in, like in my soul of souls. Um, so I yeah, took it like, goes towards like your whole background because mm -hmm. it's not where you start from. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily, or I'd say you won't know how to approach. It's like kind of starting over from what you're yeah. used to. Yeah. And that's, that's. So for some people it's scary, but it's also really exciting. You get a blank slate. Like, it's like you go, you like you move to a new city. You're like, Oh, who's, who's this girl? Like, who does she get to be? Like you get to like re like get it like this new identity. And so I, I picked, I picked up projects that had to do with, you know, fighting, uh, cli uh fighting climate change. Um, uh, uh, what would we also do? We did, um, a conservation one with like turtle nesting, uh, tracking uh, turtle nests off the west coast of Africa and then in the Middle East. Uh, that was a volunteer project. Uh, got one for um, uh, trying to like fight homelessness in LA. Um, uh, black ma uh, black maternal health in Georgia was the hackathon. And again, like if you look at all of these, they all seem so very different from each other. But the heart of each one was positive societal impact. And my manager saw me post something about that turtle nest tracking volunteer project and they work for a mapping company guess what one of their case studies is they use mapping for keeping track of turtles and so they yeah I, girl i know it was right? definitely meant to be yeah and as i was doing some of my secondary research I found, I saw Esri come up as a case study. I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Like you guys are kind of like in the back areas of every industry. And that's what got my foot in the door. That's what got my interviews was because my manager knew, he's like, all right, you got the technical skills, but it's also, are you going to be happy doing the work that our company stands for? Because yeah, our company does do mapping software products, but there's a bigger picture that they're at play. Do you stand with what the company is also standing for? And my my work, the way I branded myself as a designer, matched that. So my my manager didn't have to worry about like, oh, she's just here for like her foot in the door and then she's going to hop. He's like, oh, no, you're actually here for like the long run because this is the type of company. Because I told him, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the type of company I want to 
I see myself working at like in five years because you, you just gave me the goal of where I want to end up because this company does does it all. And he's like, all right, cool. And then we'll we'll talk in a couple months. And I just kind of kept up the conversation over LinkedIn. And then two months later, he was like, hey, we have an L1 position available. Do you want to come in for an interview? It's like, oh, yeah. Yes, please. Please and thank you. <laughs> um, and I got the job in case anyone was wondering, like, what happened? So. Spoiler I feel like alert. it's also, yeah. You're saying, Tracy? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was just saying, spoiler alert, she got the job. Like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I almost said no to the interview because I was, okay. you know, no, oh, no. I know, right? I know. Ooh, we're going on an adventure, y'all. I almost said no because I, oh, God, we're recorded. I really hope like my manager, nah, it's fine. If he knows it, Alex, it's fine. You were always number one. It's okay. Um, what ended up happening was I was in the final round for another position for another, for another company. And I had gone through four rounds with this other company. And I, they were like, they were saying, we can't wait for you to join us. We can't wait for you to join the team. Like we're so excited. So that to me, is the sound of girl you got the job it's not mm-hmm. official but i'm in the final round i'm talking with like directors of departments and they're like yeah we can't wait for you to join blah 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 cool my my current manager alex is like hey l1 position do you want in i almost said no because i was like oh i'm over here and then i have to start over again and then coming from teaching, there's this weird, there's this weird mentality of like, oh, like that loyalty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tracy, like that loyalty, loyalty to who? Like, woo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Loyalty to, loyalty who? to like, who? And oh my God. Yeah. I and that. I realized I was like, you gotta be like, no, you gotta be like Michael Jordan, 96, 97. Okay. Like get out there. What is the best deal you can get for yourself? Okay. Right now you are, I was never a free agent. I know that, but I was a free agent at this point. I was like, what? I need to make sure I'm getting the best deal for myself. There is no one who's going to be fighting harder for me than myself. So I need to go. All right, fine. I'll, I will go and keep doing the interview process. And damn good thing I did because four days later, the other company said, oh, we're actually going to do a hiring freeze. Would you be available in May? In May. Five months later, like I'm just twiddling my thumbs. Like I got nothing better to do, y'all. Like that's right. I ain't got bills. I don't have babies to feed. That's okay. So I said my spiel. I said, you know what? Yes, I'll love, like, oh, that's unfortunate for the hiring freeze. Please keep me in mind. Looking forward to talking to you in the spring. That's all I got to say. And I was like, all right, yeah. well, good thing I got this other one. I mean, um, what else can you say? Because they originally talked like, you know, hey, Justine, mm-hmm. you're looking so good and you're talking to the upper echelon. And then in a few days, if you were to go with them, mm-hmm. the job's not even guaranteed. The job is not guaranteed. And you know what? That's that's the scariest part about, about working in tech. If you're a teacher and you snagged a job, you you set like that was it. Like you're you're golden. Much. Like really, because they're like, oh god, we got okay. Woo! We don't have to worry about that position. Like you, there's no one fighting for your spot as a teacher. Okay, there are plenty of fresh designers coming in. Like yo, just because you reach senior status does not mean you're gonna. Get, there are some like new designers that are coming out and they got some new skills. They got some new tools. You got to stay fresh. You got to stay frosty. Um, and I I also got paranoid seeing on LinkedIn where some kid where some people were like. Yeah, like I was uh, uh, the day I was going to sign my contract, they rescinded the offer. Not a hiring freeze, they rescinded the offer. And I was like, oh my God, I could never imagine that. So I can oh, tell Alex, it's, on, it's going to record. I, so I got the job. So I got the job offer on my birthday, 11 11. Okay. And I wasn't going to start until like 12 6. Okay. That's a, that's a long time. That's like three weeks. And I was so paranoid. I was so terrified that somewhere in those three weeks, the job offer was going to be taken back because I had just been seeing it on LinkedIn. Oh, hiring freeze, um, offer taken back, like position canceled. And I continued applying and I was still going on interviews all the way up until my first day, until I had had 
that paperwork signed on both ends and all the way until I was like, okay, now I have my, my tech because I just, I could not take that risk of, did I do everything to get a job? And same like Chase, like there is, there's no loyalty at this point. Okay. Like, look, look, people are getting cut left and right. You get, you have to look out for number one, you have to look out for yourself. And so for me, I was like, I'm, I'm going to go on every single interview I possibly can up until my first day. And it worked out. We're fine. We're okay. Um, I, I consider myself one of the lucky ones. Like I'm, I'm not going to try and like beat around the bush. I, I consider myself very lucky. So. And I'm glad and I mean, you are, especially out, with, because if with not, everything we not have the chance to talk to you, if anything about this and mm -hmm. that is true. You're more, yeah. Well, Los uh, Angeles specifically for general um, remote work, very yeah, how to define yourself as well too. And what'd you say, Chris? Sorry. Los Angeles applying for jobs is, I mean, for me, at least over the last couple months has been very tough. Mm -hmm. A lot of UX designer boot camps out here and a lot of UX designers in general, people mm -hmm. I've met in person as well in Glendale and all over, but just mm -hmm. haven't found the right place yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it is, you know, I'm going to tell you, like, I look at a lot of portfolios. I looked at a lot of case studies. Um there, there's a lot of there's a lot of room for improvement across portfolios. Uh, one of the biggest things that I see all the time is you go from like, oh, I've got low fidelity and I got mid fidelity, and now here's the finished prototype, woohoo! And then that's your case study. Where are your iterations? Where is the part that you went back and changed your design? Oh, well, I talked to the stakeholders. Oh, you talked to your stakeholder. I had no idea that your stakeholder was your user. Your stakeholder is the one that uses your product. Your stakeholder is the one you're trying to solve problems for. Oh, cool, 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 cool. All right. No. And that also no. goes into branding because if you don't put out those imagery, you're just talking about it. Mm -hmm. Are you really like doing UX? Mm -hmm. Can you really define yourself even if you're talking to the stakeholders as a product designer? I think well, that's very important too. Yeah, well, I mean, like my my biggest gripe is when I when I need to see the designs change, I need to see the designs change because based on data, because you cannot just go in and say, like, like let's say for example where I am right now, I would get fired on the spot if I decided to change up a page because I didn't I thought it wasn't acting the way I needed it to do. Like it wasn't doing enough conversions. Like if I just thought that, where's your analytics? Where's your data? Where's your customer surveys? Where's your usability? To, where's your qual qualitative? Where's all of that? You need to come, you need to have your reasons to justify the time and resources of changing a page, of changing a flow. So when I look at case studies, that's a big red flag for me when I see someone who's the only person they talked to was just the stakeholder. Because oftentimes, well, not oftentimes, just sometimes stakeholders will come already with solutions of what they want. And if you're quick to add, if you're quick to grant them their wish list, you might be straying away from what is actually necessary for the people who are using your product or your service. And so this mm -hmm. is where, it, you know, you as a UX designer, you are going to have to do the little bit of the politics. You might have to pump the brakes and be like, let's, you know, can we take a step back? Can you talk to me about what is the problem you're seeing? What's the problem you're facing? Because maybe there's a way we can work a solution with what's currently up. We don't have to, you know, blow it all up and build it back up all over again. Like, let's, let's work with what we got. Okay. Um, and then if it comes down to it, you're like, you know what, let's, let's iterate on the design. You know what, let's, let's pull some analytics. Let's see the health of the page. Um, there needs to be some kind of proof, some kind of justification for these changes. And if I do not see that in case studies, uh, I, I move on. I'm like, this person's not ready. I, I do not want to work for this person. I do not want this person joining our team that I will be very honest. Um, so if you're wondering what can I do to improve my case studies, always, always, 
always show your iterations and show the justifications of why you iterated. Do not let just being like, oh, I talked to my stakeholder or I, you know, I talked to one of the other designers. Like, Rule number one, Honestly. you are not the user. It's good to show your work always, which is mm -hmm. very important. That makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of projects out there. Sorry, mm -hmm. Denise, go ahead. No, I was about to say, if anything, it's already 829. So if anything, we can start closing it out for a bit. And I do thank you as well, Justine, for being here. And you have gave a lot of valuable input, especially with this talk. And yeah. I definitely honestly followed the same thing you did. I went through and I put iterations on all my work and it's honestly helped too. So I think that's very mm -hmm. useful information being a UX designer as well. Too. Yeah explain explain your design thinking like you know you as a designer you're gonna have to explain your decisions anyway but if you're not doing that in your case study i'm gonna be like oh you're gonna have a hard time when you actually go up into into like a kickoff or like one of the meetings and if they tear you down and you don't know how to back yourself up like I'm, there's there's no one to hold your hand like this isn't I can't help you with that one. Like, and so like, if I have someone join my team, I want to make sure I'm like, you're going to be able to handle harsh feedback. You're going to be able to stand like on your own two feet. You're going to be able to back up your design decisions with the best explanations. Um, so put, put that into your case studies, put that into your portfolios. And I, I promise like you will end up being a way better designer. Honestly, Having thick skin is definitely something that you know, I think a lot more people need these days, like being able to take that feedback from someone who is obviously more experienced than you turning around and saying, Hey, this design sucks. Can you tell me why mm -hmm. I've, I've had people during my time in the military, I'm going to try not to take up too much time here, but I've had people during my time in the military, you know, see how I was training my soldiers. And they were like, there's something wrong with your training. And I want you to point it out. And you're thinking, no, you know, my, my thing is perfect. You know, my training is, is flawless. No, no, no. There could be a crucial flaw that you missed just because like you said earlier, you know, you have those blinders on. Mm -hmm. and so I think taking that aspect of it and putting it into your case studies and like really taking a step back, get a second set of eyes on it, you know, get some, get someone to try and use your stuff. Like, Hey, try this out real quick. Not yeah. as a usability study, but just like, Hey, try this out real quick. What do you like? What do you don't like? Oh yeah. And or, uh, what do you not like? I know we're a little over time. I'm I'm free to stay a little bit longer also because I know we're like in the middle of a conversation. Um yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um I, I check in quite often with one of my other uh senior designers. Um she works she works in Digcom, like she works in that vertical, and I work in products. So quite often our work will overlap because if I'm on products, I need to make sure, like, hey, what's the experience like when they start checking out with our products? So um quite often, like I'll pick I'll pick her brains up and I'll be like, hey, Elsa. I'm in the middle of this design. Can I get your input on how it is so far? And she'll do the same thing for me. She's like, hey, Justine, can I get your thoughts on this like checkout experience? Is there anything funky? Because it's just like you said, fresh pair. Get a second of note. Yeah, just get a second set of eyes. set of eyes on it. Yeah, and Call do it not there. do not wait until like you're close to being done. It's better mm -hmm. to just get opinion repeatedly throughout it. And sometimes we're like, oh, well, it's not done. I don't want anyone to like see it. I'm like, you know what? Who cares, man? Yeah, That's what you're someone, here for. If you're going, <laughs> if, if you work purpose. for a company or you're working at an agency and you're worried what some of your other designers are like, oh mm. no, like <laughs> really, Jody? That's what you did? That's like what you thought of? Like, oh my God. No, there ain't no mean girls. There's there is no space for that mean girl at in this time. Okay. <laughs> like, no. Um, at every designer I have talked to has been so gracious with their time and it has been so wonderfully like open with their feedback and i think that we wouldn't be designers if we weren't open to feedback like that i think that's just what it is um and those who leave design it might be like you know what i've had enough of my feedback i've had my fill um, um and i i've known some designers who've left and come back they just like needed a break and then they came back rejuvenated and they came back and they were like oh okay i can go back to what i love it's okay. Every, every once in a while, like the work will get to us. Like, I'm not going to say like, it's perfect and everything's kumbaya. Nah, that's, mm, no, let's get real. Um, but it typically other designers from what my experience are always open to providing an extra fresh pair of eyes. And that is 
that is a a wonderful, yeah, it's crucial. wonderful experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's crucial. They, okay, before, any other questions? Before we go. I know I will. I would, any other I would closing be sharing... questions for Justine before we wrap this up? Anyone? No, thank you, Justine. I'm sure we'll talk some more since you're in the LA area as well. Yeah. Yeah, we're friends now, Justine. We're friends. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're, we're friends. I can't friends say now. I can't I'm say on the complete other side of the country. <laughs> hurt. Visibly no, he, hurt. he'll he will. He really will. He'll fight me. He'll be like, I'm sorry, what? I'm just like mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Who who is this random ass person? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. As you can see, this is a recorded chat. We do appreciate your time tonight. So if anything, please look out. We'll be sending a link away to this discussion for Justine. I went ahead and I hot linked her LinkedIn so you can go ahead and check out more of her work. She's an amazing UX designer. And you can see more about her portfolios and case studies and everything that she talks about there. Not to mention, we didn't talk about it yet, but Justine is also a mentor on ADP less, besides for being an educator. So please do check her out. As you can see, she's very friendly, open, and she has a lot to say on this topic too as well. So we do thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you much, Justine. We couldn't do this without you, and we do appreciate your time as well. Of course. Thank you for having me. I was a lot of fun. Like, I'm done teaching, but like I'm out of the classroom, but like I'm never like actually like done teaching. I feel that. God, it's, I feel it that. It is impossible. Oh, I can't, it's a curse. I can't turn it off. I just love it so much because I'm like, I I, I know I know what the journey is like. So I'm like, yo, whoever I can help out, I feel you because I've been in your shoes. Who knows? Maybe I'll be in your shoes again. I don't know what this job market is like. So I, I, I really hope not. I didn't just put that out like in the energy in the universe. Hey, no, 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 no. Where's, where's no. the new- I knocked on wood for you. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Maybe gotcha. you're, you're getting up there to best friend level. So okay. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. I should knock on wood. If anything in the thing. coming week, we'll be posting up the video to our YouTube for Lab Coat UX. And you can also for this check this out there and more events. We thank you all for coming tonight and you all have a great rest of your day.